Hello and welcome to The Eye, your English news bulletin. I'm Esther. These are the headlines. Farmers in western Sumi jurisdiction, especially Agunaka, Kagaboto and Kuoboto areas are worried with the scanty rainfall this year even after the onset of monsoon which arrived late. In this regard, the western Sumi youth front has expressed concern over the drought-like situation that has occurred in these areas. As the Taliban battle rebel fighters while striving to ward off economic collapse, sources in the Islamist militant group, which took over Afghanistan earlier this month, on Friday said that the group's co-founder Abdul Ghani Barada, also known as Mullah Barada, will lead the new Afghan government, which could be announced soon. <clears throat> now for the news in details. In a letter to the Minister of Health and Family Welfare, Nagaland Pang Yupom, the All Ward Union Mokokchong Town, AWUMT, expressed discontent over the delay in completion of construction of the main building of Dr. Imkong Liba Memorial District Hospital, IMDH Mokokchong, which has brought plight and hardships to the people of Mokokchong and neighboring districts. The AWUMT informed that contract work for upgradation of hospital building of IMDH was given to KC Infra. Projects Private Limited for a tender amount of rupees 12 crore 92 lakh 64,000 on January 15, 2018 under NHM 2017-18. As per the terms and conditions of the work order, the stipulated time for completion of the said contract was 36 months from the date of issue of work order, it stated. However, even after the lapse of the stipulated time of 36 months for completion of the contract works, it is found that no progress whatsoever has been made in construction of the main hospital building by the contractors. The union informed that it has undertaken ground verification of the site and found that except for the demolition of the old building, no construction work has been started at all for the new building. The AWUMT stated that this was totally unacceptable to the people of Mokokchung and is an outright contravention of the terms and conditions of the work order. The proficiency and competency of the contractors is highly questionable and their negligence is a deliberate offence against the health and well-being of the people of Mokokchung and the neighbouring districts, the let letter further stated. Further, AWUMT is also taken aback by the fact that no competent authority has restrained the contractors to abide by the terms and conditions of the work order to complete the contract works on time. Therefore, based on the reasons cited above, AWUMT has appealed to the Minister that the work order awarded to KC Infra Projects Private Limited be cancelled and that a new tender for the said project be floated immediately. The Taliban are expected to announce the government of Afghanistan on September 3rd. The Taliban is expected to announce a new government in Afghanistan within hours after the UN's warning of the impending food crisis, urging the global community to step up support for the war-ravaged country. Preparations to inaugurate the new leadership are underway at the presidential palace in Kabul. Local reports have said the Taliban will announce Haibatullah Akunzada as the supreme leader of Afghanistan, who will be the head of the new government. Anamula Samangani from the Taliban's Cultural Commission on 2nd September said, consultations are almost finalized on the new government and the necessary discussions have also been held about the cabinet. The Islamic government that we will announce will be a model for the people. There is no doubt about the presence of the commander of the faithful Akunzada in the government. He will be the leader of the government. The role of women in government offices is still unclear. Taliban said that women will not be appointed in higher ranking positions. Farmers in western Sumi jurisdiction, especially Agunaka, Kagaboto and Kuoboto areas are worried with the scanty rainfall this year even after the onset of monsoon which arrived late. In this regard, the Western Sumi Youth Front has expressed concern over the drought-like situation that has occurred in these areas. Rainfall being the major factor in the sowing, planting growth and production of food crops, late arrival of monsoon and the insufficient rainfall thereafter has left the farming community in huge distress, thinking about their survival for the next season, the WSYF stated. 
Farmers in western Sumi area have witnessed massive agricultural crop loss this year due to scanty rainfall and farmers are already finding it extremely difficult to cope with these changes since almost all crops are season dependent and rainfall dependent, the release informed. Further, the youth organization said that the staple food production being dependent on direct rain-fed agriculture, the current situation spells doom for the farming community under western Sumi jurisdiction since the area is witnessing long dry spells comparing to other parts of the state. Hunger looms large for the farming community, although the state agriculture department has sounded an alarm over drought-like situation in the state and is hopeful that the department has prepared a contingency plan for the farmers in case of worsening situation. Despite the arrival of monsoon or delayed monsoon, there has been almost no increase in rainfall in the Mapur district, especially in the western Sumi area, leading to failed germination despite repeated sowing attempts and drying up whatever crop was sprouting and standing. The farmers who have been cultivating for decades now very well know and are aware whatever little greens one see in the ignorable surviving crops would soon turn yellowish and they have no hope about the standing crops yielding even the tiniest result. While a drought-like situation was sounded by the state government, it is being brought to light that the western Sumi area is worst hit and the farming community is already experiencing drought since all their agricultural crops have failed to survive and are staring at dried fields. Therefore, the organization has urged the state government and the agriculture department to declare drought in western Sumi area and take necessary steps in the interests of the affected farming community, who will be in further distress if the government does not take positive steps. The organization also requested the agriculture department and the Nagaland State Disaster Management Authority to depute their staff to western Sumi area for on-spot verification and for which the WSYF is ever ready to extend all possible support and cooperation, it stated. Japan is likely to get a new prime minister as Yoshihide Suga steps down, setting stage for a new leader. Japan's prime minister Yoshihide Suga won't run for the leadership of the governing party indicating he will step down as Japanese leader at the end of this month, a party official said on 3rd September. He took over after Shinzo Abe resigned last September, citing ill health, has seen his support rating sink to below 30% as the nation struggles with its worst wave of COVID-19 infections ahead of a general election this year. Suga's decision on Friday to not run in a ruling Liberal Democratic Party election in September means the party will choose a new leader who will become Prime Minister. Before Shinzo Abe, Japan's longest serving Prime Minister with an eight year tenure, the country has gone through six Prime Ministers in as many years, including Abe's own troubled first one year tenure. The move is largely a political decision so the LDP can have a fresh leader before national elections later this year. The lower house term ends in late October and elections for the new parliament must be held by late November. The Zunoboto network, even though after repeated appeals and representations served, has still yet to be improved or fixed. In this regard, the Zunoboto Range Students Union, the ZRSU, based on a 15-day ultimatum, served in the month of August, was compelled to take actions against the network providers, shutting down the offices of all the service providers, namely Geo, Airtel, V and BSNL. Nito Zimomi, while speaking to Hornbill TV, said that shutting down the offices of all network providers was being taken as part of their plan of action and further measures will be taken if no sign of improvement is seen. He informed that the union had previously served an ultimatum which ended on 2nd September. He added that the shutdown is indefinite and that it would keep existing until the network gets better. Still, all the offices of the telecom service providers in and around Zinebodo town, basing on our 15 days ultimatum, which ended yesterday. We took up these steps uh, as part of our first action plan. And furthermore, course of actions will be initiated until and unless the concern meet our demands. And this is an indefinite ban, and this will continue until and unless the network improves. 17 farmer leaders and over 200 others were booked for protesting at Sukhbir Singh Badal's rally. A police officer said a first information reports were registered against 17 farmer leaders in Punjab's Moga district on their names, while 200 more unknown people were booked over protests outside Shiromani Akali Dal leader Sukhbir Singh. 
Badal. In the rally, farmers stage a protest against SAD president in Moga district yesterday. According to Druman Nibale, senior superintendent of police, Moga police station, they had breached the security and pelted stones. FIR was registered under IPC sections and prevention of damage to public property act, it was informed. Today, the Supreme Court in an interim order stated the Kerala government's decision to hold class 11 exams physically from September 6 amid rising cases of COVID-19 in the state. The situation in Kerala due to the continuous rise of COVID-19 cases and the risk of exposing the children, the Supreme Court in an interim order stated the Kerala government's decision to hold the class 11 exam physically from September 6 amid rising cases of COVID in the state for till the next date of hearings scheduled on September 13. The appeal filed by one Rasul Shan stated that holding physical exams when the COVID-19 cases are at their peak in the state was a huge risk, especially since the children are not vaccinated. During the hearing, advocate appearing for the Kerala government defended the state government's decision to hold the exams offline and submitted that all safety protocols have already been taken care of. The Apex Court, in a reply, asked the government council to give assurance that no students will be infected and the government will be held accountable if even a single case of COVID reported for a student. The Apex Court said that the Kerala government may think of alternate forms of assessment and informed it on the next date, September 13. Today, the Ministry of Defence informed that India has signed a project agree agreement with the United States for air-launched unmanned aerial vehicles. As per the official release, the agreement was signed on July 30th earlier this year between the Ministry of Defence and the US Department of Defence under the Joint Working Group Air Systems in the Defence Technology and Trade Initiative, DTTI. The main aim of DTTI is to bring sustained leadership focus to promote collaborative technology exchange and create opportunities for co-production and co-development of future technologies for Indian and U.S. military forces. The project agreement for air launch unmanned aerial vehicles falls under the Research, Development, Testing and Evaluation Memorandum of Agreement between the Ministry of Defence and the U.S. Department of Defence, which was first signed in January 2006 and renewed in January 2015. The project agreement outlines a collaboration between Air Force Re Research Laboratory, Indian Air Force and Defence Research and Development Organisation towards design, development, demonstration, testing and evaluation of systems to co-develop an air launch unmanned aerial vehicle prototype. The Ministry of Defence said that the agreement is a significant step towards deepening defence technology collaboration between the two nations through the co-development of defence equipment. A total of 13 animal casualties have been reported at Kaziranga National Park and Tiger Reserve due to drowning and other reasons. The government of Assam said 13 animal casualties and 3 animals have been rescued from Kaziranga National Park and Tiger Reserve. Out of 13 animals, 9 are hawked there, 2 are swam there, 1 python and kept langur died due to flood. Floods have wrecked havoc in Assam's various districts. As per the flood report, the water level at Nimatigat, Dansirimuk and Tezpur is still above the danger level. A total of 223 camps have been inundated in which 70% of the camps are submerged in water. As many as 950 villages in 21 districts of Assam have been affected due to flood, revealed flood reporting and information management system. A total of 1,619 people have taken shelter in these relief camps, said the report. On 2nd September, the Arunachal Pradesh government announced few relaxations in the existing COVID-19 restrictions in the state. Few relaxations has been announced by the government. The relaxations will come into effect from September 3rd and will be in place till September 30th. The state administration has allowed physical classes in schools for students of class 9 and 12. Charu, a student, said that she was feeling happy to come back to school and meeting up with her friends after the lockdown. All the religious institutions are also allowed to open for devotees, subject to following the COVID-appropriate behaviour.
Owing to continued COVID-19 restrictions on international commercial flights, the government on Friday extended visa validity of foreigners stuck in India since March last year to September 30th, 2021. Earlier, it had been extended till August 31st. Afghan nationals already in India on any category of visa will be granted extension of visa under guidelines issued separately for them, the Ministry of Home Affairs said on Thursday. India recently granted e-visas to Afghans fleeing the Taliban rule under emergency ex miss category. These visas are valid for six months. An MHA statement said that due to the situation arising out of COVID-19 pandemic, a number of foreigners who had come to India on various types of visas prior to March 2020 got stranded in the country in the absence of flights to the destinations. The central government had facilitated the stay of such foreign nationals within India by giving deemed extension of their regular visa or e-visa or stay stipulation period on gratis basis without levy of any overstay penalty. This facility, which is presently available till August 31, 2021, has now been extended by the central government till September 30, 2021. Officials said such foreign nationals will not be required to submit any application to the FRRO or FRO concerned for extension of their visas. However, for extension of visa beyond September 30, they would have to apply on the online EFRRO platform on payment basis. MHS statement said that before exiting country, they may apply online for an exit permission on EFRRO portal which would be granted by the FRRO or FRO concerned on gratis basis without levy of any overstay penalty. That's all for the IMS Tech. Keep watching Hornmill TV.